Did you know that adaptive indicators keeps you in the trade as long as possible without getting faked out? One of the most important indicators in this field is Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. In this video, I will show you how Kama is calculated, and we're also going to see some examples comparing Kama to other moving average. Then we will use our trading platform to build strategies using Kama, starting right now. Hello everyone, my name is Ali Casey and you are watching Stat Oasis channel where we discuss finance, investing, algorithmic trading and everything else in between. If you are new to this channel, welcome aboard, thank you for joining, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the great content that I post on this channel. Also a small reminder, if you are getting any value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you can smash the like button and share the video with others as this will signal to Google to push to other viewers like you. Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average was developed by Perry Kaufman. It uses noise inside its calculation in order to adapt the length of the moving average. And the noise is represented by Kaufman Efficiency Ratio. And as you can see here, the efficiency ratio uh, calculate the changes in price over a certain period of uh, bars. And in this case, it's 10. And then it's, it's used as a a smoothing constant for the moving average itself. So there are three uh, variables inside Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. One is the efficiency ratio look back, and then the two other variables are the length of the EMAs in the calculation. So it, uh, Kaufman set that from two to 30. Now the equation has a square in it, so that means the speed will go from 4 to 900. So here is an example of Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average on the chart. And this is the default setting. So it is 10 uh, periods for the efficiency ratio. And this is the efficiency ratio plotted at the bottom here with the green line. And then the thick green line here is the uh, Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. And you can see that when the price is choppy it almost stays flat and when the price moving efficiently it goes really fast again we see here it goes really fast when the price is moving and when it's choppy it's almost stand still so now the purple line is the ema so i put the ema as 50 and we can see the differences now very clear so sometimes they will be very close together, but sometimes they are very far apart. And that is the adaptability of Kaufman moving average. And the reason this is happening is because this at the bottom, the efficiency ratio. So you can see when the efficiency ratio goes close to one, the speed of the indicator will be four. And when the efficiency ratio drops to almost zero, the speed will be 900. And that's why here it's flat. And I can prove this to you. Look, look at this now. So look at this period. If I switch this EMA to four, you can see now it's it's almost like the uh, comma indicator. And you can see now if I switch it to a long period to match this, we reach uh, almost 255. So at 255, we match this period and four, we match this period. So you can see that within almost 20 bars, we went from four speed to 255. Now, if I want to bring this uh, closer, uh, so you see a speed like 13 will kind of match the Kaufman as best as possible. So sometimes it's really close, sometimes below, sometimes above, it depends. Uh, but that is the best match we can get from the MA to the comp. Of course, you cannot match the comma with an EMA because like I showed you, the speed changes like it's a huge change from four to 900. That's a huge uh, space to move in between. But that is the power of comma, which is it can adapt based on uh, noise in the market, which in turns will keep you in the trade when there is choppiness in the market noise, and it will uh, get you out of the trade when the trend does change. Now, Perry Kaufman recommends to stay between uh, 4 and 900 and maximum is between 9 and 900. And you can do that by changing the speed of the EMA. So instead of uh, 2 because it's squared, it goes from 2 to 4. Instead of 2, you can use the number 3 
So then it goes from three to nine. Another important fact about comma and EMA indicators is they change direction when the price crosses them in, on either side. So for example, you can see here when the price crosses above, we can see that comma change direction. Same thing goes for the EMA. Again, we can see it here, we can see it here, we can see it here. So if comma was falling and then it switches up, that means the price just crossed the uh, comma indicator. It goes the same thing. If the EMA is falling and then it switches up, that means the price has just crossed the EMA to the upside. And of course, we will use that to build a strategy. So here we are in AlgoWizard in Strategy Quant X. And as you can see, this is the comma and with the defaults number. So 10 is the efficiency ratio. This is the look back period. And then the short period is 2 and the long period is 30. The equation will use the 10 as a uh, the input for the noise. And when the efficiency ratio reads 1, then this will result and we're getting the shortest period which is two squared that means it's four and when the efficiency ratio reaches zero then we will use the long ratio which is 30 squared which is 900 and so here i just use the comma is rising and the comma is falling now forget about this because this is the short exit signal so it's not going to be used because we don't have a short entry signal I just use this to speed up the building process. So we're running this on TradeStation engine on Amazon, since Amazon it's a, uh, in a bull market for uh, the last decade. And this is the data since 2009, January till end of 2017. And we will be using 100 shares fixed. And of course it works because, you know, any breakout uh, trend following strategy will work on Amazon for the past decade. We're making $62,847, 148 trades and 38% drawdown. So now I switch with the EMA. So EMA is greater than the EMA before. We're exiting when the EMA is smaller than the EMA before. And I put here a look back period because I was uh, testing many look backs. And here I put 13 just like I showed you to match the comma as much as possible. And we almost match it. It's 171 trades, the same drawdown, but we're making uh, less money. So this is now with 15. So with 15, we match it even better as we get 151 trades and less drawdown and same amount of money. As I told you, comma changes direction when the price crosses the indicator. So Perry Kaufman recommends that you leave a buffer based on ATR or standard deviation. So you don't exit when it switches direction, but instead you exit only when it crosses that buffer, which is a little bit further than comma. So I wanted to build strategies using comma only. And let me show you what I did. So this is a simple strategy, long only, using random generation and we are using only one condition to exit and one condition to enter. The data is EW, which is the mid cap. So, but here is what I did. So we're using exit after number of bars that can be used profit target, stop loss or exit rule. But we are only using the comma indicator, either falling or rising. This is in the building blocks. And then we're using the indicator, cap and adapting moving average. And we are also using all the comparison operators. That's it. So I'm forcing uh, SQX to only build using Kaufman adapting moving average. And when I ran the strategies, here is where I got. Of course, I got many of them. I stopped it. That's fine. But let me show you some of the strategies that I found. So this one uses 57 look back as the efficiency ratio. Remember, Perry recommends this to be 10. Short period 72, Perry recommend this to be two. Long period 45, Perry recommend this to be 30. So of course we are <laughs> not following Perry Kaufman at all in this strategy. And here's our signal. The long entry signal is the comma of these figures is rising, that's it. And then how do we exit? We exit after number of bars. So this is a profitable strategy. Of course, I didn't do any robustness testing on this, but you know, this is what we're getting. And let's look at another one. 
so this is also performing really well and let's see what's the code here so this one it has two comma one and the condition is one is lower than the other and now we can see two periods so first one 54 60 80 and the second one 39 50 17 and in this one we have a profit target and a stop loss and again this is really looks really good no robustness testing have, uh, is done on this now why i keep showing you the data mining results it's because regardless of how you build strategies if you are depending on your own ideas then you know you're limited because you only have so many that you can test but with the data mining package regardless of what the data mining package is coming up with even if they are garbage but they will if you look at the code then you will pick up some ideas so you can see well oh okay let me flip the fast and short inside this calculation and then i might get something unique of course you still have to do the robustness testing but you are picking up many unique ways to build strategies that other traders they will never think of it as always if you have any questions or comments please post them below the video and i'll be more than happy to answer you i do read and answer all questions sent to the channel and if you want to take this further and be a part of my inner circle you are most welcome to join the discord server through the link below where i hosted many many live weekly question and answer sessions with more than 400 questions already answered in video sessions alongside the tactical asset allocation portfolio signals and strategy code like these as always good luck with your trading good luck with your investing stay safe and i'll see you soon